17 days since the Russian invasion of Ukraine and what is being left behind is devastation and aftermath of gutted buildings on fire or blackened completely. Overnight shellings, repeated bombardments. Russia is upping the ante now against Ukraine. Meanwhile, officials in Ukraine are now alleging that the mayor of Melitopol city has been kidnapped by the Russian forces. Here's a report of what does Ukraine look like on day 17 of the war. Take a look. Air raid sirens, heavy shelling, an attempted drone attack. Kyiv continues to face the wrath of Russia. A loud blast and fire in this building inside Kyiv. Now, this is a residential area in Ukraine, in Kyiv. This was targeted. Multiple explosions have been reported uh, on the outskirts of Kiev. There were explosions uh, and, and uh, massive explosions reported in Irpin, in Bucha, in Brovery. But this is inside Kiev. The Russian army is inching closer to the capital. Demolishing suburbs on their way, one way after another. Neighboring Barishivka witnessed heavy bombings, drones shot down in Podol. Kyiv's outskirts are right in the eye of the storm. The Russian rocket attack uh, got into this building. God bless the people who live in this building, uh, live for uh, three days before. So right now they have no place where to they come back. And uh, Nikolai is a real witness. He saw how this rocket what it's caused and the fire which, which they tried to save something but it was impossible so here what we see behind us. Residents have been forced to leave their homes and take shelter in the basement of buildings with a limited stock of essentials. I'm here in the shelter in the makeshift kitchen. This is the place being used now in the makeshift kitchen. People who had proper houses, everything, now forced to live like this. This is another part of the basement. These are the water plants and the heating plants for the whole building, which is a multi store building. But right now, this whole area and beyond this has been converted into a kind of store for water and all for the people who have taken shelter here. And there are also some beds there in the corner where people are staying at present. The second largest city in Ukraine, Kharkiv, faces relentless bombardment. Smaller towns in the city paint a picture of destruction. Different cities, but similar stories of horror and loss from the shelters. Before war started, Kharkiv had been the student's capital of Ukraine. This is the student hostel of Kharkiv National uh, Aerospace University. All of you have to understand that bandit Kremlin regime started this war against all free world and we have to stop it together. Continuous shelling and airstrikes in the town of Dnipro has reduced the buildings of the city to rubble. As towns like Volnovaka and Mikolev continue to burn, residents run for their lives. Citizens that were once brimming with life and urban settlements now have become ghost towns. The Ukraine president has claimed over 7,000 Ukrainians have been evacuated from over four cities. Today, Russian troops also disrupted the work of most humanitarian corridors. But despite everything, 7,000 people were saved from Enneroder, Bucha, Hostomel. And these are 7,000 reasons to try to organize evacuation for Ukrainians from the besieged cities tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. The sun slowly goes down in Ukraine. The country is bleeding profusely, left alone to fend for themselves. With Rajesh Pawar and Gita Mohan in Ukraine, Bureau Report, India Today. Everything changed for Ukraine as a country just in a matter of one month. Once, just about a few days ago, it was a beautiful country filled with bustling cities, even tourist sites. Today, we give you first-hand account of how a lovely, a beautiful country has been ravaged by war. The before and after images, once brimming with urban settlements, 
is now just rubble and debris. Let's take a look one by one of some of these cities now becoming a ghost town. Captivating cathedrals. Marvelous monasteries. Historic monuments. And cities with grand historic landscapes. This was Ukraine for tourists holidaying in Europe's second largest country. Unfortunately, all that's left for one to see in Ukraine now is non stop missile attacks and explosions, the bloodstains of innocent civilians on roads and heartbreaking scenes of citizens fleeing from their own home with tears. Images on your screens show the mass destruction captured in the central city of Ukraine in Dnipro. Once bustling and full of life, massive shelling and continuous airstrikes by Russia has reduced the buildings of the city to debris. The beautiful town of Volnovaka has also been impacted by heavy shelling in the last few weeks. The intensity of the attacks is visible. Smoke continues to emerge from the buildings that are burnt and in shambles. Kharkiv, the second largest city in Ukraine, continues to be one of the worst hit. Yatskoka, a village in the suburbs of Kharkiv, is now filled with scenes of heavy damage to residential buildings. These videos are from a suburb in Barishivka of the capital city of Kiev, which is in ruins. The outskirts of the region has been reduced to rubble. Commercial establishments are burnt, residential buildings reduced to debris. Ukraine is also a traveler's paradise. This is one of those last genuine destinations in Europe where you can explore a lot of areas. And this is a tourist paradise, or at least it was, when lakhs and lakhs of tourists... And now Ukrainian officials are alleging that the mayor of Melitopol city, Ivan Fedorov, has been kidnapped after he refused to cooperate with the Russian military that is occupying the city now. This image on your screen is a CCTV footage of the entire incident that has been captured on camera. Anton Garashenko, advisor to Ukraine's Minister of Internal Affairs, has alleged that uh, Fedorov refused to cooperate and that then he was detained at the city crisis center where he had been in charge of the city's life support. While Russia has not officially given any comment on this incident, Ukraine is saying that the Russian troops kidnapped him after falsely accusing him of terrorism. Thousands of residents marched to the administration building to demand the release of the mayor. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is saying that the kidnapping of the mayor is a war crime against democracy and that the actions of the Russian occupiers can now be equated to those of ISIS terrorists. Today, in Melitopol, the occupants captured the mayor of Ivan Fedorov. Mayor, who мужньо захищає Україну та людей у своїй громаді. Очевидно, що це ознака слабкості. The impact of this war is also being borne by civilians, specifically children. We're now being told that one million children possibly have fled Ukraine already since the Russian invasion. Most of them forced to take a two-day long bus journey to a neighboring nation for a hope of a possible safer life. As Russia continues to bomb key Ukrainian cities, future of thousands of children, many of them have had their families left behind in Ukraine and now future is uncertain. A heart-wrenching report now from the war-torn country of how children are coping up with the war in Ukraine. Take a look at this. At this point, remember, there have been children who were seen walking on the streets trying to reach the neighboring nation's border. What does it mean for the families and civilians in Ukraine? Broken families, 
children in tears bleak future heartbreaking images of children crying and crossing to neighboring countries are going viral from ukraine most of them are orphans and are taking a two day long bus journeys towards safety in the west According to UNICEF, 1 million children have fled Ukraine since the Russian invasion. 14-year-old Alexandra, now in Lithuania, describes hearing the noise of non-stop missiles at night near her orphanage. They wanted to bomb the nearby military installation, but it ended fine for us. We only heard the missiles fly by and it was frightening. They make a whistling sound as they pass. I did not see them, but I know that they were flickering in dark. I am afraid for those who did see that. We did not see it, but it was very scary. The United Nations says the exodus is the fastest growing refugee crisis of Europe since World War II. It was very difficult for the little ones when we were leaving. They were crying because they had to leave their teachers. It was very difficult. Even my heart was broken because it was very difficult for small children as they are little. During these three to four days, children had to go to the basement for shelter many times. Ukraine's neighboring countries have opened their doors to hundreds of war orphans. When we realized that it would not end soon, during these three or four days, children had to go to the basement for shelter many times when the sirens came on. We took a decision that we had to leave and take them to safety. As Russia continues to bomb key Ukrainian cities, the future of thousands of children remains uncertain. Your report, India Today. And for the Russian troops to eventually and finally take over Ukraine, it will be the capital city of Kyiv, on the door of which already troops have been deployed. What you see here is literally how the capital Kyiv city is right now under siege, while Zelensky, Ukrainian president, says they will continue to fight as long as possible. Remember this while the Russian uh, Premier is saying that the talks have taken a positive shift. On the ground, the situation still very grim. Leaving you with these pictures, stay tuned for continuous coverage from Ukraine.